Matt Young, what's up, brother? You're all good to see you again, pal. Lots, uh, really liking the, the, the conversations that are happening, uh, you know, because of this podcast and, and because of these little segments that we're doing. I think these little tidbits are perfect for coaches. They're perfect for parents to understand what they should be expecting. And they're really good for athletes, most important, to understand, hey, look at this should be the system. And this should, this should be what, I'm, what I come to expect from a quality coaching experience. So thanks very much for putting them on. Yeah, no, I hope coaches and parents and, and athletes are getting something from this. I know I am. I'm getting lots from this. And, and today, I want to talk to you about basically athletes – you know, at the pro level, at the university level, that were role models mm -hmm. for their team and, and led their team. And, and how did they do it? What, what characteristics did these guys have? I, I know myself playing tons of sports as a kid. You know, there was always some role model guys or role player guys in the team that people gravitated to. You know, uh, they were the guys that got the team up. They were the guys that made sure that no one got treated unfairly. I, I know myself on some of the teams I played with, I was, you know, I was a good, decent soccer player. There were some teams where the lower guys, guys wouldn't pass to them. And I'd be like, guys, we, this guy's on our team, man. We, we need to bring this guy up in order for us to, to get better. We, we got to work with this guy. So it doesn't matter if you don't like him or what. No, you don't think he's that good a player. We got to make him better. So, yeah. you know, so, and, and, and listen, that. like a leper. Yeah, let's 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 take our hats off and recognize all the servant leaders because that's really what it is. It's servant leadership. So how can we make others around us better instead of just trying to you know have the sole focus on ourselves, which is tough these days. We're in a day and age where it's all about me. It's all about the Instagram, the huddle, the whatever you're doing, uh, you know, showing off about yourself. But really, it's often those quiet, unassuming leaders that are behind the scenes and are making the experience better for everybody. Uh, day in and day out that, that uh, make the difference. So I'll kick it off first because uh, I know two, I'm going to pick one, one female and one male because I think it's important to have, uh, you know, a good diversity for young men and women, uh, Mia Hamm. So you look at Mia Hamm, U.S. women's soccer, really, you know, one of those players that was not all about, let's have the focus all on me. It was all about making the team better. It was all about how, how as a team, uh, they could do things behind the scenes, not just in her era, but really stepped out and, and opened up uh, the, the, the pay equity, uh, the gender equity conversation for others to follow. And I think that's a really, really uh, telling, you know, telling characteristic of, of, of that young woman and, and what she was all about. Let's make this sport better. Let's grow this sport, not just nationally, but internationally. Let's grow this sport in terms of equity. Let's grow the sport in terms of, uh, you know, everything around it. So she's one of the, the leaders, I would say, uh, that really took the sport of soccer and, and helped pave the way for a lot of the great stewardship and leadership that we're seeing from the U.S. women's team now. Um, so I'll, I'll shout out to her. And, and, my, and my male athlete would be Larry Fitzgerald. So, you know, you think of somebody from, you know, and Larry Fitzgerald, Arizona Cardinals, he's a receiver. You know, it's not just what you do on the field, it's what you do off the field. And there's no more greater ambassador to giving back, to community building, to effort, to focus, to all the things that you want a positive role model and mentor to be uh, in and around a team. So my hats off go to, to Mia Hamm and Larry Fitzgerald, uh, you know, in terms of these aren't people that, that just jump out at you all the time. Uh, but if you do a little bit of work and you see some of the documentaries, some of the behind the scenes, some of the work that they've done, which they didn't do to get the notoriety, they actually did to make the sport better, to make the team better, and to make the experience better. So those are two uh, way out back. But I, I had a great experience, you know, in my first year of football. And your first year of football at a varsity level can be super tough. You know, you're going from a small town where you're a big shot, and all of a sudden you're a small fish in a big pond. And, you know, back in the day, and I'm dating myself, but there was the hazing, there was the vets, there was, there was a clear delineation between, you know, hey, listen, I'm here, you're here, zip it, you know, speak when spoken to. And I, I'll tell you, a guy who did a really good job, and that was yourself. And that's one of the reasons that, Thanks, I've, that I've hung around is because, and I've taken that example and paid it forward because you're a guy who came on and made sure everybody thought that everyone felt that they were inclusive and welcoming at a time when that wasn't 
it, it wasn't cutting edge. It wasn't, wasn't cool. known. It wasn't cool. it wasn't cool. People, I saw how people reacted. What? Why is this guy here? Why is this guy doing this? And so I, I think it, that you did a great job of having your actions speak a lot louder than your words, and 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 bringing people in and making them feel a part of the team. Because you know when we talk about a team and the success of a team, last episode we talked about, hey, listen, how do you onboard people so that they can you know, they can develop fast so that if you got a, a guy or a gal that goes down, it's next guy or girl up, uh, you know, next man or woman up. And, and that's really what the, 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 the cyclical nature of development of a team is. And now we're seeing, you know, you, got, you had your five starters, one goes down, you're throwing in a, a, a new guy or gal and they haven't had any experience. Well, they're your immediate, uh, what they call, what Urban Meyer calls is, is, is the fish, uh, throw to the fish. Uh, because they're not going to be the matchup is not a good matchup. So and there's uh, no trust. There's no trust initially. It's like I don't trust this guy. Yeah. So absolutely. So thank you for that. That was a great experience for me. It's a, one of the things that I'll never forget in my life, and I'm really thankful for. But you know, outside of you, to the other people that have, uh, like the Larry Fitzgeralds and Mia Hamm, those are those are the two people that I would uh, exemplify, and those are the reasons why. How about yourself, brother? I I'm glad to be thrown in the boat with those two. Those are great people. You know what? I, I got to say, I, I watched last year. I'm going to use, I'm wearing my Raptors gear. And, you know, he's not with us anymore. But I saw the effect of Kawhi Leonard on a team. And I, I have to say, I've never seen a, 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 an individual come in and sort of change the culture. Like in terms of uh, community, like, a sense of pride in what they did. Like he, he got these guys to be a defensive force. Mm -hmm. and, and it was like everyone's game came up. And I don't, I don't know how he did it, if he did it through practice, through, he did it through, through talking, through his communication. But he, he was a guy, he-, he brought, What are you talking about, practice? He brought a country together. And, and he made these guys believe, like not one guy on our team had ever been to an NBA finals. Right. Much less a, a divisional championship. Right, right. And he made these guys believe in themselves right through every game they played together. You could see the confidence, the confidence. And I owe that to, I, I attribute that to Kawhi Leonard and, and his leadership uh, as, you know, he wasn't selfish. He always moved the ball. He, he could have hot, like many times, I, I thought he was, I thought he should have shot. Mm -hmm. but he was looking for a pass. He tried, and his thing was, he tried to include everybody as much as he could in the beginning of the game. And then if he needed a little extra, he might hog it a little bit at the end. He had the right formula. Now, how things went at the end, that's, that's a different story. Different, that's, that's, that's a different business. podcast, but different that's podcast. Business. That's business. Yeah. The other person for me, and this might be questionable, is Tom Brady. Some people might not agree with me with Tom Brady, but his leadership, how he trains himself, how he, 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 he like, you, I'd see him in the, in the middle of the season barking at guys, just kind of, come on, guys, let's pick it up. Like, let's play better. Like, like this guy doesn't have to prove anything to anybody anymore. Mm -hmm. like, nothing. He's got to prove nothing. But he still plays at that competitive edge, you know, and, and the guys around him, like, if you see the GOAT basically still giving her, like, you got no excuse. This guy's won Super Bowls. This guy's, he's got every title. He's got every accolade you can, you can think of. But he plays every game, it seems, like it's his last game. And you can see the frustration when he's not playing well. He's not blaming anybody. He's just back to the drawing board, focused, sitting on the bench. You see him in between, sitting on, just focusing next so there's something there. The, the, the New England Patriots have something, and I think he's a big part of that reason. Yeah, that absolutely. Way. And you, you make a great point about the great ones always trying to better themselves. And, yeah. you know, the examples that we've given are examples of people that are always trying to better themselves. They're builders. They're not maintainers. They're yeah. not just trying to get yes. there and maintain. Hey, listen, I got the big check. I got this. I got that. No, no. They're like, let's try this next year. You know, Simone Beals. Of, of the USA gymnastics team is just right now. She's, oh, she's over the top. She just set a record for the most amount of Olympic medals won. And here she is going out and trying new stuff. Let's, and that really is coming from the coaching that 
the, I, I read the headline about her trust in her coach and her coach's trust in her in helping in helping open up the doors for that young woman to do things in the gymnastics scene that that, that like Tom Brady is doing on the on the NFL gridiron. I mean, year after year, we'll never see another dynasty like this. You know, Simone Beals will never see another dynasty like her in the Olympic medals. So I, I agree with you. It's all about those people's. I am a builder. Let's continue to get better. And that's a great message that a lot of young people can benefit from. And, and leadership. These guys, they kind of, they help these kind of players. They help coaches. Mm -hmm. Because if they bought in, like, you can't go against one of the best athletes on your team. Like, this guy's bought in, guys. Like, you know, that's, that's also telling. You know, what Clyde Leonard was on the same page mm -hmm. as the coach. Brady's on the same page with the Bill Jack. Yeah. Like, that's the kind of stuff where you can't go against the guy who's been successful, the guy who's your top dog. If, if you know, you look around, if he's going against coach, that's when you got guys that are like, oh, man, he yeah. doesn't respect the coach. Why yeah, should you know, Yeah, and the saying goes, we've talked about it all the time, leadership starts at the top. Uh, yeah. you, you know, and, and it's often the leadership that starts. All these people weren't at the top of their game. They just didn't show up. Um, they came in and they bought into a system and then they were empowered to do that. And they took some, some emphasis or responsibility on their own and, and they rose, rose to the occasion and they keep rising to the occasion and they keep rising past the occasion. So, you know, it all starts at the top with, with your best player. So I totally agree. And the other common denominator about all the people I think we've talked about is they made the people around them better. Mm -hmm. All of them, the people around them, it, it, it was like contagious. Mm -hmm. And they made sure that not only did they play well, but they made the guy around them look good, mm -hmm. you know, rise their game up. So all, all of the people we've talked about, they were ones that they were good at making a building everyone else around right. them. With humility. And that's, that's yeah. important. It's an important piece, you know, with humility. So that, you know, what the characteristics I'm trying, I'm trying to narrow down some characteristics these guys had. And you said it, the leadership part piece is definitely one, you know, obviously there, some of them were quiet leaders. They weren't noisy. Right? They weren't the big, big noisy guys, but that, that ability to, to rise to the occasion and, 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 and make people realize like, yo, we're competitive. We're going to be competitive together. Right. Um, right. I'm not, I'm not sure what other qualities or characteristics that they might have that we're looking for for young athletes to see oh i mean lots i mean you're you're looking for the things like the the social emotional connection and and all those leaders that we mentioned have an uncanny ability to connect with all their players uh, you know they don't view themselves as good or better or not you know tom pretty takes a pay cut uh, yeah. so that someone else can be on the team you know you, you could go through every one of them and and you could make a comment uh, you know, again, notwithstanding the business of sport, but you can make a comment that these these people are making sacrifices. They're selfless. So, in, in an era that's very selfish and very self-centered, these le these leaders are very selfless. And that's a that's if if we could give one nugget that we need to end on, it's about being selfless. So, a lot of younger people need to understand the benefits of being selfless as you're on your journey. Uh, far outweigh the benefits of being selfish or the, the, said it brother, better. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better, brother. Mm -hmm. That's, that's it. It's helpless. These guys are, as you said, you call them servant lead leaders. Mm -hmm. That's what they are. Right. And, and that's all these guys have long careers. This is the reason. Absolutely. And Take these people, yeah, they, these people have an opportunity to go on after that and be great leaders in other uh, industries, other spots, other sectors, coaching. I mean, the, the, with this attitude, you, you, the sky is your limit. Uh, you know, versus some of the headlines that you read about these people that are totally self selfish and making it all about themselves. Who wants to hire that person after sport? Who wants to be associated with that? You want to be associated with greatness and, and you know, greatest of all time, irregardless of their idiosyncrasies or, or what, you know, state you're from and team you don't like. Uh, let's put that aside. These people are really great people who have done a lot of great things for the sport, the communities and their teammates. And I, and I think you're right, Matt. These me guys they're not going to be around in the future. There, there's not going to be space for a me guy that doesn't get along with the team, doesn't get along with the coach, the staff, the philosophy. Me guys are, are like Antonio Brown are, are going to be watching from the stands. 
Yeah, and, and unfortunately, you know, lots of different names that we could throw in there, but they, yeah. all those people, they have the that show that's dedicated to them. It's called Where Are They Now? And and uh, we, you don't ever want to be on the Where Are They Now? show because you want to be still relevant. Yeah. Love it, man. So, brother, on that note, just go play. Go play. Have a good night. Talk later, bud. Yep.